In this video, I'll be discussing the key characteristics of late medieval and Gothic art. To begin with, late medieval and Gothic art was heavily influenced by the Byzantine time period. The Byzantine time period focused only on religious subject matter, and they did so in a more picture story format where the message was about the biblical themes and the biblical stories, but in a way so to help people who were illiterate just understand main main characters, if you will, and get a sense of um, just a way to, to understand, not so much to read tell a scene okay so it's what's considered what we call like picture writing okay so some out of that came these general style characteristics which make late medieval and gothic art look similar the first one is the symmetry so symmetry means that the left and the right hand side are essentially the same they would typically put your central figure in the very middle and make that figure very large just to show the idea of dominance that this was the important person in this case often it was mary then you would have the same number of um, figures on the left as the right okay so it kind of almost looked more like a design or a pattern than it did a realistic environment okay also, if we look at number two, there's no realistic sense of space. Um, and that goes into your scale and a flat background. Because they were trying to tell us just important information about biblical themes or biblical stories, there wasn't a need to be elaborate in the backgrounds. The backgrounds didn't matter because you had to just focus on the characters involved. So that's where you get a lot of times that flat background where we don't get a sense of space, like we're not in a particular environment. And they would often use gold um, a lot to contrast with the blue. Now, also part of realistic space gives that illusion of distance. And here we don't have that. Yes, we see multiple figures, but you're gonna see that they're very much stacked on top of one another. And there's no sense of scale, meaning the, the size of the person in the foreground is exactly the same size as the person in the background. And they just kind of feel like they're stacked on top of one another. Not that this person is further away, you know, showing that illusion of space. Um, and again, it just reads as what we call flat, almost like what I like to think of paper cutouts. Like if you had a paper cutout and kind of create that collage, um, so that was kind of what we're seeing there. And it didn't matter to them. So again, if you're talking about picture writing, I can very much comprehend the number of people without getting a sense of realistically how the, those people would interact in the space. And then lastly, um, the number three characteristic is unrealistic anatomy. So, and I guess that also goes into the lack of identity. Um, you'll notice that Mary and along with the figures here all essentially look exactly the same, like all the figures do. There's not a sense of individuality or identity because it's not needed. Once I have a symbol that represents a female or apostle or an angel, there's no need to give it um, individual characteristics. And in doing that, because I can identify as a person, there wasn't a need to really study anatomy. So sometimes you might have very elongated faces or elongated noses, or the mouths kind of were more like frowny mouths. There's no smiles, there's no facial expressions happening here. Um, sometimes the proportions were elongated, like the torsos are really, really long in comparison to how they would naturally appear. Let's keep moving on. So these three artworks are also from the late medieval and Gothic time period, but they're a little bit later on, meaning hopefully you're noticing a breakaway um, from these kind of staple, very specific style way of painting. And so as we progressed, you had one artist in particular, Giotto, who starts breaking the rules of the late medieval canon, if you will, or the late medieval aesthetics. So 
in this time period, you are going to see early signs of naturalism in the figures. They're not perfected, but they're early signs. And so Giotto was one who decided to kind of think about instead of just treating it like picture writing, if I were to play out this biblical scene, he started thinking like, where would the people stand? How would the people react? What would the environment look like? And so he was one of the first to begin putting in backgrounds. And one of the key things that he did was instead of seeing everybody as a symbol, which we often just saw the front view of them, he broke away and added profiles, okay? So we're seeing them from the side. Or lo and behold, we saw a person's back. And what this does is just signify um, as if you're standing there in that moment, seeing the scene being played out, okay? Um, there's a limited expression, but we are getting a little bit of that. But truthfully, we're not getting a little, a lot of I, individuality. If you notice the face of this person, this person, this person, this person, they all look like they could be siblings because they all look essentially the exact same. So while he is breaking away and there were artists who were wanting to get beyond that just um, strict picture writing format, it was limited and the expressions themselves were relatively limited and they still feel relatively unrealistic and semi-flat. Even though there are beginning stages of showing drapery and values, they still very much feel kind of like that paper cut out, um, elongated proportions that weren't necessarily realistic. And then lastly, um, even though they're starting to put backgrounds in and showing the sense of depth, um, it was limited in their ability to show that distance. So for instance, this is Christ entering Jerusalem, but we still get very much stacked on top of one another feel. And if you look at the individual sizes of the figures, this figure is essentially the exact same, same size as this figure or the figure down back here, which is meant to be further away. And in realistic distances, things that are further away are smaller to show that they are further away. Same thing with buildings. Buildings should be seen as smaller because it's further away. And we don't have that here. Um, you know, the children in the trees or the angels in the trees are almost the exact same size as if they would be standing right in front of us. So although they're attempting to show distance, it's extremely limited and not realistic. So those are if I'm just summarizing a couple key characteristics that help define and help you make those small visual connections of late medieval slash Gothic time period.